Hello, this is Bruno Pelletier-Backer. Today I would like to talk about shifting positions. Um, very often we can, um, we know how to play scales. It's going to be, a, we're going to talk about a major scale, F major scale, um, in one given position. But then if we run out of notes, we clearly have to shift. So either shift up if we need some higher notes or shift down if we need uh, lower notes. So. If we think of the basic fingering for, for an F major scale, uh, we, let's say we would start it here on the fifth string. The fingering that everybody knows would, would be this one. My finger pattern would be starting from the fifth string, two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, okay? This basic fingering. Um, if I were doing the same scale but starting from the fourth string, I would start here with, uh, on the third fret, fourth string, with the same second finger, and my pattern is still the same. Two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four. Okay? Um, and if I were starting, if I had started from the, the big string, which on this guitar is not something we would do, obviously, but it would still be two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, right? Assuming we have a, an electric guitar, a long neck guitar. So if, for whatever reason, I were starting on this F here, most likely I would still try to use the same fingering. So I would go two, four, one, two, four, but then, of course, for the last part, the one, three, four, I don't have a string um, to play that on. So what we can do then is use the same finger pattern, but on the same string and shift. So it would give me this, two, four, one, two, four, and then shift here, one, three, four. So in time, Of course, you can see right away that the challenge is the shift on that one string. Here, when I go from this finger to that finger, fourth finger to the first, and that's the tricky part. So what we need to do is do this very, very slowly and make sure that each note is as long as it can be and basically try to minimize the shift. I say minimize because there's always gonna be a little something, you know, and you, you'll notice, you'll see your progress. Certain days, you, 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 you can get pretty close to almost, almost not noticing the shift, but there's always gonna be something. In other days, it's terrible, and sometimes, you know, we can do, we, can, we, we might hear a little, sh uh, a little slide or a little slur, which ideally we will try to avoid, but you know, we will try to do it. And, uh, and going down. So down we will throw that fourth finger, right? It's going to be four, three, one, with the first finger right here. And then, even though it's only a whole step, we have to move the hand entirely to the position that um, we will finish in. Um, what I like to do also is double every note, so play eighth notes. That way it forces us to really leave this note at the very, very last moment. Because what, what we're watching for or listening for is not having our notes be long, 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 short, long, long, long. Right? That would be the, the worst possible way to do this. So the note would be short because it means I'm leaving this note too early because I, I want to give myself time to jump up to the next one. So in order to avoid that, I can double my notes. So play eighth note. Like that. Okay? So that's one way we're going to look at um, uh, a few different ways. Um, what I did, so this first example, I was basically going as far as I could in this position and then shifting at the last moment. I could shift early, so play.
play uh, those two notes here on that string, then shift here on the second string to my final position and then finish here. So it gives me this. We still have a shift, which is, you know, by the way, the, the topic of the day. Um, here, what we might do in that case, and it's going to be noticeable in particular if we um, go back down, we could have started with the first finger here. We could go one, three, instead of going two, four. It might make a little more sense. So one, three, and then shift here, one, two, four, and then finish one, three, four. So I would have this. And then down. In which case I threw my third finger. Like this, right? So one more time. Up and down. Okay, so that's um, already two different itineraries. We start um, on the same note, same string, and we end with the same note, same string, but the shift occurred in two different places. Um, another fingering for our major scales would be starting with the fourth finger. Remember, if I were playing my F major here, I also have this fingering in, in position, meaning I'm starting with my fourth finger. I would go uh, 4, 1, 3, 4, etc. So if I started on that F on the second string with the fourth finger, um, at least I could start that way, but then most likely what I would prefer doing is this. Go 4, 1, 1, and then continue here and then shift one last time. So fingering slowly is this again. So it's 4, 1, 1, two, four, and then one, three, four. I lingered a little too much here. I made it, made it sound too much like a slide. So it's not what we want, right? It's, I mean, we could, we could do this if, for, if we want that special effect or whatever, but right now we're picking every note. So down, down. Okay, so that's um, that's something that we probably should be doing. I haven't actually I realized that as I'm doing this video that I haven't really done this um, very much lately. So uh, it's always um, I like doing those videos because every now and then it makes me think, oh wow, I haven't I'm telling everybody to do this, but you know, uh, it's been a few weeks since I did that. So um, good reminder, you know that kind of technique. Uh, we need to spend time, we need to be patient, and we need to, to um, remember about maintenance. You know, it's a few things that we need to do um, um, regularly. Okay, so, um, oh, why are we doing this? Well, eventually we could do longer scales. You know, if I were saying, um, I could do, okay, what if I were starting a, my scale here? I could do this. So let's say I'm gonna shift the same, same way I shifted the, the very first uh, fingering. So it was two, four, one, two, four. I'm shifting here, one, three, four. And then I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna shift again. So I could do something like this. Back down. So I have now three octaves scale. This is uh, my first octave, so F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F, um, and then from that point continue. Either I could go like this, actually it's two octaves, not three octaves. Um, there are multiple ways, actually, and that's, that's why it's always a good idea to, to, to try to figure out different ways so that when we actually improvise, because remember this, the whole point of all this stuff is getting ready for improvisation. So you don't have always one access to your, to your line. Um, the more possible ways you can, you can uh, access without having to think, uh, the better. Okay, so 
work within one octave. You know, again, it's it's good to to just start here on the second string and then realize that we're stuck and we need to go up. Um, but then you could you could do that. So if I started like just one octave here, I could do the same fingering here. So two, four, one, two, four, and then let's say I'm going to stop here. But I'm only using two adjacent strings for my fingering. If I were starting on the fifth string, I could do this: two, four, one, two, four, and then finish one, three, four again, most likely on the electric guitar. Okay, so that's um, some ideas for you to to work. All right, so until next time.